This engine doesn't fire every time. It runs for a moment, then goes completely quiet. No ignition, no explosion, just spinning metal. Then suddenly, it fires again. To a modern engine, that would be a failure. But more than a hundred years ago, this behavior was pure genius. This strange rhythm is exactly what allowed these machines to power farms, workshops and entire industries before electricity ever reached them. This is the story of the hit and miss engine. One of the simplest, most durable and most misunderstood engines ever built. Today, power is everywhere. Flip a switch, push a button, and machines wake up instantly. But at the end of the 19th century, none of that existed. Most farms had no electricity at all. No motors, no generators, no reliable source of mechanical power. If you wanted to pump water, you pulled a lever. If you wanted to grind grain, you turned a wheel by hand or used animals. If there was wind, you used it. If not, you waited. Power was inconsistent, unpredictable and exhausting. As farming and small industry began to grow, one thing became clear. Human muscle and animals simply weren't enough anymore. People needed a machine that could work all day, every day. A machine that didn't get tired. A machine that could run on simple fuel and survive harsh conditions. That need is what pushed engineers toward a new idea. Small, gasoline-powered engines that could work anywhere. But early engines had serious problems. Early internal combustion engines were crude. They used basic carburetors, simple ignition systems and almost no regulation. Once running, they fired continuously, whether they were doing work or not. And that caused a big issue. Fuel was wasted, parts wore out quickly, heat built up, engines shook violently at higher speeds. Without electronics, sensors or computers, controlling engine speed was incredibly difficult. Engineers needed a way for the engine to slow itself down automatically when no power was required. They could not control speed precisely, so instead they made a bold decision. They controlled ignition. Rather than firing constantly, the engine would only fire when its speed dropped below a certain point. If it was spinning fast enough, ignition simply stopped. This idea changed everything. The heart of the hit and miss engine is its mechanical governor. As the engine spins, weighted arms move outward due to centrifugal force. When the speed becomes high enough, those weights engage a mechanism that prevents the intake valve from opening fully. No air, no fuel, no ignition. The engine does not stall, it simply coasts. The massive flywheel keeps the crankshaft spinning, storing energy like a mechanical battery. As the engine slows down due to load, the governor releases. The valve opens again, fuel enters the cylinder, and the engine fires. That firing is the hit. The silent rotations in between are the miss. It is crude, it is mechanical, and it is brilliantly effective. No electronics, no feedback loops, just physics doing the work. Hit and miss engines were designed for one thing above all else, reliability. They ran at very low speeds, often just a few hundred revolutions per minute. This drastically reduced internal stress. They used large heavy flywheels to smooth out rotation and handle sudden loads. That flywheel allowed the engine to do heavy work without stalling. The designs were simple, few moving parts, no complex systems, poor quality fuel was not a problem, dust was not a problem, cold weather was not a problem. If the engine had fuel, oil and a spark, it would run. Some of these engines were started by hand, every morning for decades. They worked through heat, rain and freezing winters. 
Many were so overbuilt that they outlived the farms they powered. This was not accidental. These engines were built for people who could not afford failure. On paper, the numbers don't look impressive. One horsepower, three horsepower, five horsepower. Even the largest hit and miss engines rarely exceeded 30 horsepower, but these numbers do not tell the whole story. Horsepower ratings today are measured at high engine speeds. Hit and miss engines produce their power at very low RPM. That meant torque. Massive, steady torque delivered smoothly through a belt or pulley. These engines powered water pumps, sawmills, grain grinders, compressors, and mechanical tools. A five horsepower hit and miss engine could run equipment that would surprise most people today. It was not fast, it was not smooth, but it was unstoppable. Once running, it could work all day without complaint. Once farmers and workshops saw these engines in action, adoption was fast. Manufacturers began producing them in large numbers. Companies like Fairbanks Morse, Hercules, International Harvester, Stover, White and many others flooded the market. Engines were sold by mail order catalogues. They shipped by train and wagon. Some were permanently mounted, others were mounted on wheels so they could be moved between jobs. A single engine could transform a small farm. Tasks that once took hours by hand could be finished in minutes. For the first time, consistent mechanical power was available almost anywhere. This was not just a new engine, it was a quiet revolution. Hit and miss engines were never meant to last forever. As electricity spread into rural areas and diesel engines became cheaper and more efficient, their practical use faded, but they never truly disappeared. Today, many of these engines still run. Not because they have to, but because people choose to keep them alive. Collectors restore them, enthusiasts display them at engine shows. Some start them once a year just to hear that sound again. That slow rotation, that sudden explosion, that rhythm from another era. Hit and miss engines were not perfect machines. They were machines built perfectly for their time. And that is why, over a century later, so many of them still breathe.